let's talk about WCW from March 8th, 1999. WCW Nitro. This is the go home Nitro to Uncensored. Uh, yes, I'm glad that you said it. Like, I love Uncensored. <laughs> uncensored. That's how they always say it. I don't know why. This is the, uh, the WWE equivalent of Extreme Rules pay per views. Yeah. The triangle. So match. it sucks. Mm, they're yeah, in love yeah, with shapes. <laughs> You know what's crazy here? Um, I bet Everything. you that this show was before a lot of people listening to this were born. Oh, why'd you say that? I'm yeah, just like saying, that. man. Just I'm just like saying. Oh, Dude, the amount of, I, there's a lot of 2000s babies. I'm just saying. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah, I guess you're, you're, I mean, you're probably right. But mm-hmm. like, I mean, so, okay. You say that. And obviously, um, you know, they've been watching wrestling since. So they might not understand how popular wrestling really was yeah, yeah you right? going because, to the ratings yeah i just want to uh, just real quick just to give you guys an idea uh this three hour episode of nitro which i, I mean dog shit <laughs> <laughs> that's for true <laughs> Just shit. Uh, this <laughs> two hours of nitro really actually still dog well, shit. Three, yeah. So I even have the the quarterlies too. Uh, oh, oh, you great. got all that. I because I, I was I was like, what is the drop off here? The first hour of the show had no wrestling. This show uh, did a four point four. Wow! In the first hour. Or the whole show? No, that's the overall. Oh, okay. oh you want to know what they did in the first hour? Hold on, hold yeah. on. Before you say that, I want to, like, we're saying no wrestling. Like, oh, yeah, it might just be, like, not a lot of, no, there was, like, zero, not one match, no, not in not, the arena, n- like, no, yeah. nothing at, like, not were, one physical all, content. V- all interview and, like, talk segments. Yeah. And then, we'll get to it, but, so... Overall, the show did a 4.4. Hour one did a 4.9. <laughs> Dude, they were, okay, so in hour one, they they were not up against WWE. Right. Yes. That's how they used to run it, right? An hour before yes, WWE. they did an hour before, right. Um, so hour one did a 4.9. Hour two did a 4.1, and so did hour three. Um, hmm. Raw did a 6.4. <laughs> well, what's going on, Raw, then? Uh, you know what? That's a good question. I'd love to know what was going on in Raw then, because it had to have been, I mean, I don't care what was going on. It had to have been fucking better than this, bro. Whatever it was, it wasn't better than Telecom USA. Dial 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Here, I'll go over the Raw results real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. This was, uh, wait, is this, this is March, oh, oh, was it, was this taped too? Ooh, that's tough. This says Raw was taped on March 2nd, 1999, and it aired March 8th. That's totally okay. could be true. So, uh, D'Lo Brown beat Owen Hart in a Steel City street fight. Mm-hmm. Billy Gunn and Road Dog defeated Al Snow and Hardcore Holly uh, in two minutes. Ken Shamrock beat Goldust in one minute and two twenty one seconds. <laughs> Test with China and Shane McMahon beat X Pac with Triple H in three minutes and fifty five seconds. The Godfather with Hose. Yeah. Beat, oh, Godfather versus Steve Blackman ended in a no contest. Uh, Tori with Sable beat Luna by DQ in thirty nine seconds and. Mankind beat Steve Austin by count outs with Paul White as a special guest referee in nine minutes and one second. So that is what they were up against. Dude, and... that sucks too. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I would watch that way quicker than I would watch Bret Hart and Van Hammer do holds. <laughs> this Monday Nitro brought to you by Telecom USA. Dial 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Cineburst, buy this gum. <laughs> Fuck, please buy the and gum. And 1-800-COLLECT. Save money today. <laughs> that was literally the first hour of this whole show. Um, yeah, so as I said, there's a Nitro or sorry, there's a Thunder before Uncensored, but this is the go home Nitro. Tony, did mm. you did you have the Thunder results too? I did. I put po- where did I put? Po- I think I posted them. I'm curious yeah. what because I I can't I don't I can't imagine that. So Nitro- if I can describe Thunder for people that don't know how it worked, so Thunder was meant to be their SmackDown, right? No, no. You- Yes and no. They okay. So WCW guys were under guaranteed money contracts, and right. then Bischoff was like, "Yo, we should just do Thunder on Thursdays." Uh, Bischoff actually didn't want to do Thunder. Was it Wednesdays? The TV wanted another show, right? Yeah, yeah. Turner wanted okay. another. Mm-hmm. So 
the boys oh, were getting paid the exact same money for them to show up on Thunder, and a lot of them had those favor what's a favored nation contract, I think yes, it was called, yes. where you get to decide like, no, well, I don't want to do that. Wasn't that I, what it is? I thought Favorite like Nations that. was if somebody else gets signed higher than you. That you get one. The bump, but there's also right? another clause yeah. in there that, like, Shouts out M. They, they had, like, a certain <laughs> amount of dates, and then they just were like, basically, what I'm trying to say, a lot of these guys were like, yeah, I don't want to work Thunder. I'm not working Thunder. Fuck Thunder. So, like, True. all the big names never showed up on Thunder. And then some of the other guys decided to go on Thunder. Uh, this Thunder was Raven versus Dave Taylor, Benoit Malenko versus Disorderly Conduct. Uh, defeated Disorderly. Who was disorderly conduct? I don't know. It just says disorderly conduct. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking. It was disorderly quick. and conduct. <laughs> uh, mean Mike and Tough Tom were disorderly <laughs> conduct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, that's um, even better than they should have just been disorderly and conduct. <laughs> we're actually gonna do that. Don't take that. Nobody take yeah, that. Yeah. Can you mind your business? Yeah. Best? Get out of here. What y'all listen to this for? The Sandman, known as Hack at this time, defeated Hardcore the bar Hack, yeah. defeated the Barbarian, and Booker T and Rey Mysterio defeated the WCW TV champion Scott Steiner and Buff Abagawell. Hell yeah! That was of- the go home show for the Uncensored pay per view, <laughs> which Uncensored was headlined by a steel cage match with Flair and Hogan. So, which they built during this whole show. <laughs> They spent every second building this barbed wire steel cage for Hogan and Flair for the WCW world title. What the <laughs> fuck, bro? I, okay. I guess we should just get into the show now. Um, the now show it's opens. Time. Yes, now it's time. The show Hold opens. Hold on, this with... is from Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire Massachusetts. I can never say <laughs> Worcestershire Shosh, Massachusetts. <laughs> 9,400 in attendance, by the Worcester. way. It's, it's Worcester. Worcestershire, 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 just this too. Put down on my Scott Steiner, Massachusetts. <laughs> um, so the show starts, uh, and uh, if you if you've never watched WCW before, they have a cool like the, the intro to Nitro is actually cool. Uh, I've always liked the Nitro intro. It was like, in a, like in a neighbor- yeah, it was like in a neighborhood, and it was fire. <laughs> <laughs> the world was on fire. Cool, uh, and it was cool. But this starts with them. It was just a uh, a bunch of dudes like welding and like putting together. I didn't realize it was them putting together the cage because I was like, "What is going on?" This is they didn't on say it until no. hour two. You yeah. wouldn't know either, yeah. Yeah, because they don't explain it. What I thought they were doing was spending a lot of time making like a a WCW logo, which is what it looked like. Yes, because like, they what? they weld the word the letters WCW. Yes, which good god. <laughs> so I was already like sus about this so episode. basically the idea is like you remember when they made the elimination chamber and they had a cool promo of them like the making elimination the chamber. chamber yeah and they showed like how it was being built that tons was tons of steel <laughs> <laughs> the blueprints and shit. that yeah, was, was the awesome. idea but then they just did so this is like a steel cage with no doors and barbed wire at the top so they're making that's this not, thing that's, that's we should use that for deadlock too <laughs> you want to just take the nitro theme? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's take that one part. <laughs> just so, we'll get Van Hammer to play it. <laughs> I love you, Van Hammer. So, I don't, I'm extremely angry about this, how this show starts. So, I don't know if you, you want to take it or if I can. Oh, baby, here we go. All right. So, 90s water guy with goatee makes some sweet barbed wire stuff for the cage. It cuts. 90s water. What do you call him? 90s water. 90s welder, welder guy. guy. Welder. Oh, okay. I thought Hell you said yeah. water. So, okay. anyways, we cut next and they go straight into a recap segment. And you think, oh, a recap segment. They're going to be recapping it. No, they said, we're going to yeah. recap by replaying the entire promo from WCW <laughs> Thunder last week where Rick Le- Flair and Arn Anderson sit in a chair and go <clears throat> <clears throat> for eight <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Rick Flair's drinking coffee. I wish I had just... a water bottle because the whole time, like, flares. I'm like, <laughs> Anderson's, Anderson's just sitting there, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how it went to me. Rick Flair's like, <laughs> <laughs> and fucking the whole time, they spend eight minutes repeating the same shit over and over again. Flair keeps saying, Oh, you know, my best friend wanted to beat up my kid. <laughs> my kid is driving around a Mustang, living in my house, joining the NWO. He stuck me in the back with a stun gun. <laughs> cool. Yes, that did happen. Uh, he says, I got power with this company for 20 more days, and I'm going to have a cage match with Hogan. This goes on for, oh, I, I'm pretty sure it was just over seven, but it, it felt like seven fucking hours 
fucking at one point Arn Anderson I wrote down he wrote Gaga in Goo Goo yeah, I don't went, remember he's, what he's, okay <laughs> so let me recap this bro for you okay. I, I made some sense out of this thing Great. because I was, I, someone needs to bro because okay. this shit's fucking horrible so basically David Flair Rick Flair's son you might not even know he was a wrestler but he went to join join the NWO right and he oh, had I'm a wrestler is is strong. <laughs> Sports do entertainer, remember, okay. Do you remember his WWE Titan drop? <laughs> <laughs> it was a the shot of him in the ring, and then player. a shot of his dad. <laughs> Repeated. Okay, so the recap in this Thunder thing, uh, Arn's basically like, yo, bro, I know you're broken up about this. Your son, he turned on you, went with the NWO. You should focus on your family, your son, and all that. And Ric Flair's like, nah, fuck that. I want the gold. I want to be 14-time <laughs> champion. I want to run WCW because currently he's the president of WCW, yes. I believe, right? Yes. yes. So, so, and then the whole thing, he's like talking about how David Flair's with Stacey Keebler at the time, right? He's Isn't also the... 19. Did you know he's 19? He's a 19-year-old kid. He is 19. <laughs> he turned 20 in a <laughs> week. A... <laughs> He's with Stacey Keebler at the time, right? And then Arn said, man, I know you'd be Gaga and Goo Goo over a long-legged girl like that or something. That's where he Was Gaga it Stacey? Because they showed Tori later, right? Was it Tori? It was Tori. I think it's Tori, Tori. Yeah. yeah. Eventually was... he goes with Stacey, but I think for this angle it was actually Tori. You mean Miss yeah. Hancock? Yes. It was but Tori she, in this time. You're she right. wasn't called Tori here. I didn't catch what they call her. They did call her Tori. Tori. Did they? Okay. Yeah, they called her Tori. Yeah, so that was the whole thing. This whole thing is like, <laughs> basically, Arn Anderson's like, you should care about your family, and then Flair's like, yeah, I only want the title, and he's like, no, but you know, I, I know you're kind of broken up, and you're not thinking straight. I know you still care about your son, and then Flair's like, yeah, but I really just want the title. <laughs> so that's all played out. What is like, uh, what's the? There's got to be like some scientific thing that like guys like Arn and Flair, and even a lot of guys back then. Where their entire lives they've looked old. <laughs> <laughs> that was W. That was WCW Arn, all the time back then. Arn like DDP. Looks, somehow Arn looks exactly the same as he does here as that he does in AW. Yeah, he it's does so, actually. So weird. He's always looked old, but it's like he's permanently just <laughs> fifty-five. <laughs> yeah. That was just a '90s wrestling thing, I think. Like, and I especially agree. WCW, a lot of guys looked Steroids. really old. <laughs> Guys. So, oh, no, if you saying, get on the steroids, you can they're stay. Drinking this, you got to drink them steroids, fools. <laughs> I am God. looking. <laughs> this fucking segment sucked so much ass. And it wasn't even a segment of this show. It was just them recapping Thunder. I was pissed. Bro. This Monday night, they're brought to you by Telecom USA. Dial 10 10 3 2 1 to save up to 50%. <laughs> 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 so they, yes, they give you the 10 10 3 2 1 uh, sponsorship, which you see a bunch on the show. And then they cut to Nitro Girls on the Road to Spring Break. Spring Break! Woo! WCW Nitro Party in like, it looked like a high school gym. I don't know what was going it on. It was here. at Brown University, they say. It was at some. It sucked. It brown something, you know? <laughs> they didn't suck the for, the, for the crew. They are hanging out. Bro, who the... F like, never... I don't know. Maybe I just lived a different life, but never have I said, you know what? I want to go out partying on a Monday night. <laughs> Me and the boys do it all the time. We go to nitro parties all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Ricky Rack. I call yeah, up all my boys via Telecom USA by dialing 10 10 3 2 1. Why was the nitro party in Providence, Rhode Island when the show was in... Fucking Massachusetts. Didn't you? They're on the road to spring Why? breakout. It's the road, too. It's where's, like the road to road, show. Where, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> this is the road to show. Oh, shit. Oh, I got to get an eight man tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dookie, you're not in this one. <laughs> fuck, dude. Fuck Dookie, bro. Dookie, you're not in this one, kid. Sorry. Dookie, you suck. <laughs> you can't be in this one, kid. John is going to take over here. Don't care. Get ass. <laughs> I'm 37. <laughs> So I don't care. But it been 30 years. <laughs> Shout out to Jado. <laughs> Jado said, I'm in this baby. Sorry, man. We uh we were watching the New Japan. Sorry, shit. Dude. Yeah, we were watching, oh, yeah, we watching yeah. New Japan. Also, uh, oh, sorry, I was thinking about this. I just thought of this right now as I look at my notes. Ricky Kazarian won the spring breakout thing. Wait, what? Doug Kazarian won the trip. The future. Doug Kazarian. <laughs> As the Nitro Girls are giving out Cinnaburst gum. <laughs> Dude, fuck Cinnaburst. <laughs> I'm taking a stand. <laughs> Cinnaburst sucks. You ever had a Cinnaburst? I think so, yeah. Was that the gum wrapper that people used to lick and put on their forehead because it burned? 
That's Big Red. I think that was that was just Big Red, yeah. <laughs> if you oh, don't you guys remember that? Big Red. I thought that was Big Red. Yeah, because I, I did that. Yeah. People did that? Oh, shit, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I popped the boys with that one. Ooh. I definitely did that. That sucked. I don't that, know why, though. Yeah, that I don't know why. That hurt, that. though. It did why, hurt, though. Why did people do that? That was... So, um, man, we, we didn't have phones stupid. back then, man. You kidding me? We had it on 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. Exactly. You had to do Telecom USA. Our phone was sticking gum wrappers on our head. Yeah, we used to beat each other with sticks and shit. Yeah, yeah. Weird, yeah, bro. Do you uh, remember the commercial speaking of Dead Dead Three Two One, where the guy called Collect and he goes, "Bob, we got a baby eats a boy," and he hangs up. So, <laughs> so they, like, do you remember that commercial? Yes, I do. I the love commercial. the '90s, fuck, dude. Dude, I wish this episode had the commercials because this probably would have been the best. Uh, part of probably the best show. part, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they after had Ricky Rackman, sh- dude. Yeah, Ricky Rackman, who's looking like he. I mean. They filled him in later on, like he's talking to Kidman later on in the show and acting like he knows what the fuck he's talking about. So I guess he knew something, or they just, he's good actor. Ricky Rackman <laughs> so, is a huge cruiserweight guy. So who's Ricky Rackman in? Is he just like an MTV guy, or Yeah, what he is hosted he? Uh, Headbangers Ball. Okay. Right? Maybe. Yeah, pretty he sure did, that was show, yeah. yeah. That's what it says. I just don't um, know him personally. I can't remember him off the top of my head. I don't know head. him personally either. <laughs> I mean, I can't remember seeing him on a show. You call all him. Do you know Ricky Rackman? Is that your guy? Yeah, I called him all the time. You know who I called him with? <laughs> Ted <Ten, ten. laughs> Danny. Okay, first first how, how dare you because I use 1-800 collect. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. Ricky Rackman told me how to put big red on my forehead. <laughs> if that's not the title of this podcast, <laughs> big red on my forehead. This title, it should be, Why the Fuck Is There an AC Jazz Hype Video on This Show? <laughs> <laughs> they cut from that to this girl, and it takes like two minutes for them to say who the fuck she is. She's the Nitro Girl AC Jazz. And then she says her dad died, and I had to feel bad for the rest of the segment. She, she has a dog. With her dogs, though. Yeah, yeah, you saw the dogs, right? She's, a, she's the clown yes. of the bunch, if you didn't know. She likes to uh, play practical jokes. Oh, yeah? She's the ribber? She wears overalls. <laughs> Yeah, she better grow up. <laughs> yeah, get a job. <laughs> Stop fucking around. <laughs> and then, one of many, the following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. It's fucking it sounds like, why is it, it Nash doing it? It sounds like he did that like five minutes before they put this video on. What happened to the OG guy? What the fuck? Nah, they didn't want to pay him. They didn't want to pay him. Couldn't afford the phone so here's... call. <laughs> 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 they should have used 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Let's say 50%. So, Fucking following announcement paid for by the NWO. It's fucking Hulk Hogan. Sit down interview with Hogan talking forever about nothing. He starts it by saying uh, he's talking about his kid. And then he says, people hate me, man. People look at me and they're disgusted. <laughs> true. That's true. That's <laughs> true. He said he did it for the money. <laughs> he uh, said money, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> He said, people used to look up to me, but then I had to turn around and tell him I did it for the money. <laughs> he says, Ric Flair is worse than I am. He's a rotten piece of crap. He's Dude. the most rottenest person on this earth. <laughs> He's upset that Ric Flair isn't selling any of the shit the NWO has been doing to David Flair. Because he's like... He said he's not sad that he lost his son. He is the <laughs> he says he says he is the rottenest human being. <laughs> rottenest. I love this a lot actually because it was it was actually so Ric Flair. Like David Flair's like hitting him with his stun gun and he's just with all these girls and he's got his cars and he's staying out late and Ric Flair's like yeah. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, Hulk Hogan comes off as like a giant baby face in this promo because he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's... you should care about your son and your family. And Flair only wants the gold. What a rottenest person! And the control of wrestling, which, uh, yeah, and he also buries Flair. Is this where I feel like this is where he buries Flair, right? Where he's like, the only thing he wants to do is control all of wrestling ever in the entire world. Yeah, or that's that like one. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. get the Marriott. I- I wrote, <laughs> I wrote at the end of this, oh my god, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Hogan did say Flair wanted to stay on top until he's triple digits, which is hilarious, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we get another, the following announcement. It's been paid for by the new world. Oh, why didn't you just like keep it going? Like, why did you keep telling me? I, I know. I know it's been paid for by the NWO. There's three in a row. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is the NWO. I thought it was like okay. the NWO hour at first. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, well. So this I also guess, there's like commercials, I guess. But still. yeah, but there's also a Conan rap video and something else. I think like a, a shirt, t-shirt, something. Yeah. So 
that's going on at the time. Do you so, know where these were? Where an actual show was placed at? It was yeah, right it was before it these, cut to Conan. I thought. Oh, okay. It was between Conan, the NWO stuff. Conan's not in the NWO still here, right? He's in the Filthy Animals. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's another fucking NWO announcement. It's Nash and Hogan on a couch watching the Flair promo. Um, and I, I the whole time I could every time I cut the Nash, I just couldn't stop thinking Super Cracker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nash rules. And uh, going back yeah. and watching all this, I'm like, man, he did rule. The um, yeah. like this is actually a pretty cool way to do this. It was like a riff track. I like this a lot. Yeah, like Mystery Science Theater kind of. Yeah, yeah, but good lord, it went on yeah. forever. It went on forever. It's like, shut up. Just it, get, <laughs> like, if you want to just say something dot. funny, you cut it up, you know, whatever. Yeah. And the, all the funny stuff was coming from Nash. Hogan just had some weird shit over and over again. Yeah. Fucking, uh, <laughs> fucking Nash calls them North Carolinians. At one yeah, point. I, I pop. <laughs> 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 and then during this, they're like, they're saying like that like Nash implies that Flair is like Tori's dad, and then <laughs> Hogan implies that Tori fucked Flair, and it's just just them, just it, 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 all of these segments I feel like just had the same thing where these guys were told to go like seven to eight minutes and they just had no material so they kept repeating the same fucking mm-hmm. shit over and over again. Uh, okay, well and, fuck this part, but the next part is what we need to talk about. The Lex Luger? No, fuck the Lex Luger. Past that. <laughs> The next is next part. The road to spring breakout? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the good Don't stuff. Ig- Listen, you can't ignore the big man Lex Luger getting a hype video after it says the following announcement. It's been paid for by the World Order, and then it's just a Titan Tron for Lex Luger. This reminds me of, like, you're trying to book TEW and you got to fill time, so you just do a Lex Luger <laughs> promo package. Yeah. Da-da, da-da. Hype package for wrestler. <laughs> Purpose to get over. <laughs> Failed. Hype, up- yeah. Hype upcoming match. <laughs> yeah, so Road to Spring Breakout from Boston, Massachusetts. This rule. Uh, this is a fucking tremendous segment. I didn't All realize that- Buff and Scott were, like, a team, a team and they rule to get like I forgot about them <laughs> together and it rules. Pulse, tell them, tell them what happens. This is tremendous. Yeah, I love this. So it starts off with a WCW stretch hammer because they're on the road, baby, to spring break. You know what I mean? Spring break out now. It's getting hot. Okay, well, this hammer is dangerously swerving everywhere on the road. <laughs> well, it's Scott Steiner fucking driving. <laughs> yeah, this summer is just like, the cops are like, oh, we got to pull them over. Boston's finest pulls them over. And I will be damned. Scott Steiner and Buff Bagwell are driving it. I don't even think they're intoxicated. I think they just can't drive. I think Scott Steiner just can't drive. <laughs> yeah, he, had his full, he had his sunglasses on. I, I was hoping he was wearing the chain mail. <laughs> that would have been perfect. <laughs> he didn't wear no. it at this point yet, though. Yeah, no chain no. mail. He had a do-rag. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. that. So the cops <laughs> ask Steiner, they go, can I get your license? He goes, what, what, what do you mean? The license plate's on the back. I said, oh, oh my. No, cop actually says, can I see your license plate? <laughs> oh, did oh, he say you? plate? Yes. That's why Steiner said, oh, the license plate's in the back. Oh, I thought he said license. I was like, oh, that was a good quip from that's Scotty. Why I was like, why the fuck did he say, can I see your license plate? <laughs> yeah, what do you need? The license plate's on the back. <laughs> it's on the back of the car. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So they pull them. They're like, all right, y'all got to get out of the damn car. Get out of the car. So the cops, they just happen to know the two WCW legends. They go, is oh. that Bob Is that Bob Bagwell? Is that Bob Bagwell? Is that Big Papa <laughs> That's Big Papa Pump. <laughs> <laughs> I say, that's right. That is Big Papa Pump. And he's going to holler if he knows him. They pull him out the car. They go, oh, that's Buff and Big Papa Pump. And he goes, well, you know, we should bring you in. But we won't. For what? He said, we're going to bring you in. Yeah, well, that's Boston's finest for you. We're going to bring you in. But instead of that, how about you do our police work for us and go arrest people? (laughs) I would play that video game so quick. I was like, what the hell just happened? (laughs) Okay, so. Boston's finest. Boston's finest. uh, They're like, here, take our books. Steiner goes, can I get a hat? And the cop goes, here, take my badge. And then Steiner goes, hell yeah. And a hat. No hat, no hat. Um, so <laughs> literally, it cuts from them getting the books and the badges and everything from the police officers, and they go around Boston and literally book people. They just hand out tickets to everybody. Yes. There's a woman smoking on an escalator, and they take the cigarette away, and they give her a ticket, and they say, no smoking, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> they started out like, okay, and then they just then they started instigating crimes. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy... I don't know. Oh, he was like walking by a parking meter and they say, what's this say? He says, expired. He says, 
You gonna pay for it? He says, what? And they pick him up and turn him upside down and shake him for his coins like he's in a fucking cartoon. Yeah, I thought it was like yeah, a movie he's... scene. I was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah. He says, I don't have any change. And then they go, yeah. you don't have any change. And then all the change falls out. That was awesome. Tremendous. I think they were, they were sitting somewhere. Uh, they were just chilling in like a lounge. Um, yeah. And Steiner is sitting inside a trash can. He moves the trash can out of the way. So someone goes to throw a piece of trash at it. And he misses the trash can. And he books him for littering. <laughs> He says, you're stealing from the system, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say that. He doesn't cut away to black. <laughs> and then it cuts Imagine. back and they give him the books and they're like, that's a damn good job. <laughs> good job, yeah. <laughs> like, I wish that was an ongoing thing. That was... Yeah, that, that was actually really that's, good. That's up there with like paparazzi production stuff, I think, for me. That was awesome. Oh, Honestly, watching awesome. most of the NWO stuff, I was like, damn, this does feel a lot like... Well, when Kevin Nash was in it, when it, it felt I was yeah. like, no, yeah. this is literally just that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I dig that. They uh they cut back to fucking Ricky Rackman, the big man, and he ha- he's got the cruiserweight title, and he goes up to Kidman, who's the cruiserweight champion. He says, "Kidman, why the fuck can't I get any pussy with this title, but you can?" <laughs> and he says, "I don't know. <laughs> I, I also don't get pussy." <laughs> Yeah. As Kidman's drinking out of the Red Solo Cup too, a WCW Red Solo Cup. <laughs> Sick. Course. They oh show... yeah, there's also a Domino's Pizza at the party, by the way. Oh, yeah, Ricky Ramos. Yeah. I love Domino's. I eat pizza. I eat Domino's. I love Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> I make the phone call to call he, it in with one eight hundred collect. He says, "You know what? I'm going to take this cruiserweight title and go try to get some more women." Thank you. And Kidman lets him. What a what a guy. Kidman does um, not care about that belt. No, he's no. <laughs> Kidman said, "I'm going to be Hulk Hogan here soon, brother." <laughs> Neither did they. They didn't give a shit about it either. That belt looks clean, though. It does look nice. It is a nice belt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they show a hype video for Kevin Nash and Rey Mysterio, who are going to face off once again at Uncensored. This is like <laughs> right after, <laughs> right after uh, Mysterio unmasked, which to this day it, it feels weird to me. They had something um, with the giant killer gimmick, but they yes, they kind of just forgot it. They they yes, they definitely did. I just don't understand how like. I mean, I'm obviously WWE eventually does. They make fucking millions with Rey Mysterio. Oh yeah, like I don't. He was the how guy. the fuck did they fumble this bag so bad? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, especially with the performances Rey was putting on at the time. Crazy. Yeah, like for real. Like uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I I mean, like you said, Nash is booking at this time, so I guess this. I don't know if this was his idea or. I, yeah, or he took Ray's a... mask. He beat the end of the streak. I mean, what else? What <laughs> else can I do here? That I will book myself to win. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> if you gave me the book, I'm doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me so I, I have, have unlimited money and I can book myself to win every <laughs> match. <laughs> sounds I good can to me. Be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> this sounds great to me. So, what do you think comes next? Uh, bing, 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 bing. The following announcement. I want to fucking die at this point, dude. Fuck. So many. So it's, they show uh, a woman shooting guns in a shooting range. I'm like, all right. And here comes Nash and Hogan in full outfits, like big fucking jackets. All right, cool. So they go back and it's Tori and she's definitely shooting the gun. Bing, 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 bing. Definitely. She was 100%. Definitely her. Real gun, 100%. Dude, so she had this, the extendo, dude, because they walked in. You could hear her shooting the gun. It never stops. They walk through the door. Bing, 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 pew, 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 How many shots are in this pistol? <laughs> Bro, she letting that thing She was letting it go. hang. I said, what is going yeah, on here? She had the extendo on the bottom. I was like, crazy, oh my, she got the drum. Yeah. She got the upgrade. That was crazy, <laughs> she, man. Like, they yeah, pop up was... to her, and she's still, I mean, she is unloading. Ding, 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 Huh. She's like, I'll be here for a few more hours. I'm like, what? She said three hours. I said, <laughs> she said, I want to go to Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, I'm going to Nitro. <laughs> so it's it's Hogan and Nash being fucking weird and Tori also being weird and doing like the worst laugh I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down, I said, Hogan and Nash are being real creeps here. Yeah, this is just all around creepy. They're like, they're going to go eat dinner. Yeah. That's really the I think it Kevin is. Nash is like, what up, kitty cat, or something weird. He's like, what up, Some girl? Fu- yeah, he yeah. says, he says, dress pretty. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. That was We're going to dinner. That's what we know. Yes. Yeah. yes. Not, of course they are, Tony, because the following up, <laughs> <laughs> world order. And now we're at dinner. 
It's dinner time with the New World Order. It's Nash Hogan. It's already Hogan. dinner time right away. It's, it's dinner time. Yeah, three hours later. <laughs> it's time. It's it's dinner time. Yeah. Uh, it's. <laughs> I did the Vader hand thing, by the way. <laughs> Upside down. It's a fucking... It's dinner time. <laughs> it's Nick Mondo. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Mondo time. <laughs> so it's Nash, Hogan, and Tori at dinner. And Nash says, get your hands off my meat. So this is how this is going. No. <laughs> they can't stop. They going. just can't stop. They yeah. just can't stop being the weirdos. Uh, so Tori Wilson says, uh, you know, they're going for plan B. Because plan A di- didn't work. They're trying to, you know, Ric Flair won't sell all this shit that they got David Flair doing. He's just not yeah, reacting to he it. He won't sell Flair. work to shoot, brother, yeah, insider got, terms. Let's go. Want, yeah, he's, he won't I don't sell. care. They, they said it a bunch of times. That, oh, Flair's not selling. <laughs> <laughs> so, got to go to plan B. Plan B is that Tori Wilson has a hot girl that's going to fuck David Flair. The this hottest is the plan. chick What is ever. the plan? What is the, this plan? Pl- you don't, oh, you don't think that Ric Flair would be super upset that a hot girl's fucking her son? <laughs> The wow. hottest chick ever. They said, "What is the plan?" They said, "Okay, well, you're a ten out of ten, Tori. What is this girl? She thinks about it. Twelve out of ten. <laughs> and Hogan whoa! is taking a gas with this. Said, "Whoa, that's a lot of numbers." And then they lied. <laughs> <laughs> the girl comes no, she in, wasn't, <laughs> and she is the hottest chick ever. <laughs> Listen, man. I mean, I this whole thing, like, oh my god, yeah. So the, the the girl comes in. She's talking. I mean, she, whatever is cool. David Flair is gonna fuck this woman who definitely looks like twice his age. But you, know, all right. Uh, it said David is the, nineteen. She goes. <laughs> said, <laughs> like uh, what? So okay. And she's, and then they say she gets twenty thousand dollars if the job is done. The NWO is giving this woman twenty thousand dollars to fuck David Flair. And they said, why? I would fuck David Flair I said, for $20,000. $20,000 to fuck David Flair. Then why does Rick not care about this? And I was, <laughs> Rick, trying, to, I was trying to figure out, how is this bad for David Flair? How is this bad for Rick Flair? David like, Flair's wh- fucking why is everyone, bro. What's for, going on here? What is the plan? Like, this grand, like, if let's say this is, shoot, brother, work, brother, brother, brother like, real life stuff, like... Is he How supposed is his, to be like, oh, what my is he son trying is, to do? Is living uh, uh, this life that I lived. He, I don't want him to do that. Like, is that what it is? Because all Ric Flair yeah, did was fuck. He Ric doesn't Flair care though. He only forever. wants the title. So what's the? Are they trying to get Flair to care by having him twenty grand, baby? Next week on uh, Nitro, David Flair has sex with the hottest chick ever. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Cuts backstage to Arn and Rick talking about it for 20 minutes. <laughs> you got the water bottle, James? <laughs> hey, Rick, I don't know what's going on with David. <laughs> Looks like he's having sex with the hottest chick. <laughs> Arn, didn't you want to beat his ass? <laughs> Flair said four times on the show that Arn wanted to whoop David Flair's ass, and that was a problem for him. <laughs> because Arn wants to have sex with the hottest chick ever. <laughs> Well, I'm not giving Arn 20 grand for that. Sorry, <laughs> big man. Why? You could really confuse the rest of the four horsemen. <laughs> I think that really upset Rick Flair. <laughs> Tully Arn Blanchard Anderson. would be super upset. <laughs> we are no longer the brain busters. <laughs> so that is an hour. Everything we just said was an hour, the first hour of the show. So now, dan 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 Finally, in Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, Worcestershire, Massachusetts, WCW Nitro, and Mean Jeans in the ring, baby. That's that guy. Mean There's Gene, no like, one like talk, that, dude. Can we talk about Mean Gene for a second? Because fuck, dude, he ruled. There was no one like yeah. him. He reacted like he was a regular human being. It kind of was cool. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Especially yeah. later on with fucking Sonny Ono. <laughs> My favorite Mean Gene moment is in, it was WCW one where I, it was the Natural Boy and Thrillers backstage, and they're like fucking with Mean Gene, and Mean Gene says, "You better stop fucking with me. I know guys that'll take your kneecaps <laughs> out." <laughs> What? Shit, shit rule. Well, yeah, when, when Tori comes to the ring in a minute, and that Mean Gene reacts to that too. He's like, "I don't know why you're saying butt. You know you shouldn't be saying butt." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, he's Mean Gene's talking about Goldberg, and let's bring out Goldberg. But okay, before you get to the Goldberg thing, oh. I wanted yeah. to say this. Um, yeah. So you're probably wondering, like, okay, so there's an hour of this pre tape stuff. What's going on in the arena itself? There are four dark matches going on. Oh, 
during this time. I didn't even think of that. That's right. These people had to fucking sit there during all this. You're right. There okay. There's four dark matches. La Parker versus Juventud Guerrero. Probably sick. Awesome. Chavo Guerrero versus Norman Smiley. Sick. <laughs> Bam Bam Bigelow defeated Mike Enos. Enos. I don't know. Mike, Mike Enos. Anus. <laughs> Mike Anus. And then like, uh... Finley defeated Prince Iakea. Oh, shit. Fuck Prince Iakea, bro. So that stuff all went on in the arena while all this promo stuff was going on. And then uh, Mean Gene calls out Goldberg. Wolfpack music plays, and here comes David Flair and Tori Wilson. This son of a bitch. I don't know how Ric Flair's not crying right now. He's about to do uh, it. Ric Flair, uh, or sorry, David Flair and Tori are in the ring, so they're going to wait for Ric Flair to come out here. Uh, and this ho- acting is horrible. <laughs> they just are so lost. And here comes Goldberg looking like a fucking brick shit house. This guy's gigantic. <laughs> and he's got the, the nice pants on. He's got no shirt on, though. He's looking real hairy, liking it. Uh, and then it goes to commercial as Goldberg's making his entrance. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then Goldberg comes out again, finally. Uh, Goldberg says, I got a lot of respect for your family, so I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> dude, okay. That's a good line. Okay, dude. <laughs> like, Goldberg interrupts him. He, you're right. He does look like an absolute monster. His traps are crazy. Crazy. Bro. Um, but then he cuts a promo. He's 170 something wins in on this streak, and he comes to the ring and he cuts a promo about the business. He goes, "Ric Flair's done it all, kid." Like that. Yes. David's not this motherfucker's yeah. son. <laughs> He goes, he's done a lot in this business. What the fuck does Goldberg care about this business? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, he just put over, he put over the big man already by now. This is crazy, man. <laughs> Absolute insanity. I was like, I can't believe he's cutting into this business promo. This is crazy. <laughs> this business that I love. <laughs> <laughs> Not do anything for your father because he's done a lot for this business that I'm in and that I love. <laughs> <laughs> so David Flair starts poking at Goldberg's chest and he's giving him the business and Goldberg grips him up this run in it has to be an all timer for me yeah because Ric Flair house of fucking fire charges out whips his jacket off Gets into the ring. He's By the way, from s- backstage, like from he backstage, enters the yeah, arena, he, and they yeah. tell him, "Hey, Flair, look what's going on in the ring." And he's like, "What?" And he runs to the ring. He wasn't even paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> He runs Who's that kid? <laughs> Tony Schiavone said, "Look, Flair's streaking to the ring." <laughs> <laughs> so Flair gets in the ring, fired up. His son's gripped up by Goldberg, and what does Flair do to stop this monster? He grabs him by the shoulder. He whips him around, and he chops him. <laughs> Hell he yeah. chops him one time and then turns his attention to David, <laughs> who's already ran away. This, I could not stop fucking laughing at the chop that Flair. Like, Goldberg even looks at him like, what the fuck? <laughs> Goldberg obviously then, doesn't respect the business. And then fucking Flair's paying attention to David Flair, who's leaving. Goldberg's like, fuck this. He grips Flair up and <laughs> just, just press slams him. <laughs> Is there a move more over than the Goldberg press slam? Dude, it was all, and it looked great too. The main event he and does now, it again, and it's crazy. Ric Flair is losing it now. He's screaming in Goldberg's face. Goldberg's like, You've lost your mind. Buddy. <laughs> and he says, You've you've crossed the line, Flair. And Flair says, The line! The line! I am the line! <laughs> Pal. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's flipping out. Flair just starts rolling on the floor. <laughs> And then he books himself against Goldberg in the main event. Ric Flair rules. Yeah, he does. <laughs> That's crazy. Ah, God, I loved it, dude. Like, the fucking chop, and then Goldberg's just like, fuck this, press slam. Yeah, this You're is dead. awesome. God. So, yeah, Flair and Goldberg uh, in the main event, which I was pretty excited for, because I don't think I've That's ever seen That's a big matchup wrestling. at this time. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> so up next, uh, I guess it comes back from commercial. Here comes Raven, mid-entrance. And in the ring already is Hardcore Hack. All right, cool. Let's fucking go. This he's, is the Sandman, baby. by the way. Yes, the Sandman. Looking uh, like the Sandman. He's black just, shirt. He's got off black his job. Shirt. Yeah, his day job. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, here. Uh, so they both have, they start with, uh, Sa- uh, Hack has his uh, Singapore cane and Raven has like a chair, I think. Um, mm-hmm. They both drop the weapons, hug, and then start fighting. What? That? Why? ECW, ECW. I, I they guess. said it was a little yeah. solidarity thing. I don't know. They yeah, said well, solidarity. Comedy. This Raven fucking then whips him, and Sandman takes a flip bump into barbed wire. <laughs> yes, he does. Sandman took no like reason. forty of these bumps like this. 
He loved taking that bump. Yeah. I don't know why, but it was cool. Uh, Raven kills him with like cane shots to the head. They just do a bunch of stuff. Raven sets up a table on the stage and then jumps off the stage through the table on Sandman. And then off the Nitro set, which, by the way, has never been done before, they say on Comic Day. Was that true? If they I said it, like it's got to be true. I can't. I feel, yeah, Tony Giovanni would never lie to me. I feel like <laughs> Raven could have climbed a little higher. <laughs> for another five grand <laughs> <laughs> so he, they're laying there dead in a table and slowly from behind the curtain is Bam Bam Bigelow who looks like he was told to just go out there right now and didn't know what to do because he just stared at them and then he starts attacking them and then the bell rings what the fuck happened? commentary didn't even know what was going on they're like oh okay I guess it, it's a no contest because Bam Bam uh, interfered, and then they're they just keep fighting. They're brawling. Well, and all. they they uh, keep arguing on commentary too. They're like, "Oh wait a minute, is that the, the said, match started? Yeah. Is Bam Bam in the match now? No, they, no." Eventually, <laughs> they decide it was an inadvertent bell, and the match is continuing. But yep. that does not explain why Bam Bam is here still. The match <laughs> continues under Raven's rules. We find out. So, but. It was false count anywhere to go to, uh, to, to, at the start. It and doesn't they, matter because there is no finish well, to the match. Uh, it doesn't matter because they never go for a single pinfall in this match once. Not once. Chastity uh, is also here. Yes, she's flipping out, running around. Just She doesn't get involved, but she just yells and stuff. Uh, Sandman takes the flip bump into the ladder. <laughs> Gets hit with a bunch of fruit. Uh, they do a bunch of like ambulance spots. Sandman says, you want to get extreme? <laughs> <laughs> when they're at the ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> and then he gets uh, thrown into it. <laughs> and then he gets thrown into it, yes. Uh, Sandman gets put in a trash can and then thrown inside of the ambulance. Shivani says, this is incredible. <laughs> they do. Uh, they start fighting on a limo. This feels like they like were meant to cut away way sooner or something. Because mm-hmm. this goes on forever. No one tries to win. Like It's just them doing a bunch of spots. And then there's no referee in, at this point. So we're backstage fighting. There's no referee. Uh, and then it eventually like cuts to uh, sh- uh, a segment from last week where Bam Bam and Raven were fighting, which was way cooler than what we were seeing here. They were like actually whooping each other's ass. Well, there was this one so, spot right when they came in uh, where you said, you know, where um, Sandman took the flip bump into the ladder. Yeah. And it was right beside a forklift. And Tony Schiavone goes, by the way, guys, that's... Uh, Fork lift, so no one will get confused. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> By the way, guys, that's a fork lift. With all yeah, due respect. <laughs> <laughs> like I, they said that about something else too. Fuck. Uh, oh, it was he called. I think he, Bob was it Heenan on commentary too. He called it a, like a, a Zamwoni or something. <laughs> he I, said, "Oh, it's a Zamwoni." <laughs> this segment was a fever dream. I don't know. Yeah, this. They just okay, so the, forever. I guess bookings, they were setting up the uncensored match, which was Raven, Bam Bam, and Hack in a three-way. So I think yes. they're just like, um, go home, you guys brawl, and we'll just set up for the pay-per-view. I, to the, I mean, who knows how long they kept fighting in there before they knew. In that the, the triangle was... match. Yes, the triangle match. Shapes. Uh, uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, after that, we get Liz Mark Jr. against Chris Jericho with Ralphus. And were you guys as upset as I was that they dubbed in Jericho's fucking WWF music here? Yeah, I, I, I was like, like, what the hell happened Yeah, here? they do that on the network, though. Like, I'm it's jarring. I expect no, come that, on, Jimmy yeah, Hart. Sure. Just give him, give him your fucking rip-off music, Jimmy Hart, you bastard. The uh, it's This is around the time Jericho, This is he's leaving to go to WWE. He does not care at this point. So Jericho comes out here with Ralphus. He's got a dog collar on with a chain on it. Uh... And he starts, he rips up somebody's sign and attacks it with a chain. <laughs> uh, he says, welcome to Monday Night Jericho. Uh, he is specialized, trained master of the chain. And he says he's going to whoop Perry Saturn's ass with it. I guess they have a dog collar match at the pay-per-view. Yep. He says, he, w- he said, I trained with the yogis and the mountain men for this. I am the swami of the dog collar chain match ski. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. He said, I am leaving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, Perry Saturn, or he said, Liz Mark Jr. be the first link in my chain, chain, chain of fools. So Jericho is out the door at this point. He said, <laughs> I am leaving. <laughs> so Liz Mark puts on the dog collar. They have a match. Jericho yells, Ask him 400 times. Ask as him. you do. Ask him. He said, No, Chris. Uh, Liz, they do. This was a fine match. Um, 
on commentary they're talking about Perry Saturn's outfits. I guess he was wearing a lot of he was doing crazy the dress. Stuff. He was doing the dress. Yeah, uh, Shivani says even Marilyn Manson would be shocked at what Perry Saturn wears at Uncensored. I don't think Marilyn Manson gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Manson was naked at a lot of those concerts. <laughs> Perry Saturn <laughs> should have been naked at the pay per view. <laughs> uh, Jericho wins with the Lyman, uh, Lyman, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Lyman Lion Tamer. tamer. Uh, yeah, and then your your boys up next, Big Scotty Stein. Ah, oh my God, this is the best part of the show. I think TV actually champion. everything with Scott Steiner was the best part of this show. This um, promo is good. Yeah, this is a time period where Steiner was still trying to find himself promo wise. Um, he had just kind of started figuring it out. Um, they had they started pushing him super hardcore. Like in the early '90s, Steiner just did not ever want to talk. He's like, I don't like talking. And then he's like, yeah. Wait a minute. Now I can talk about my hussies. Now I can say whatever I want. <laughs> <Yeah, my hoochies. laughs> he said, now it's time. So this is actually a pretty crazy match looking back on it. Steiner and Booker T, which is the same. Uh, like We get this match a lot over the next year or so. Yeah, This is like one um, of the final Nitro matches, right? Steiner and Booker? Yeah, I believe so. Um, because they ran, yeah, they ran this all the way from the TV title here to the world title later on. Yeah. Um, so they do that quite a lot. But Steiner cuts a promo. He comes out with Buff Bagwell, right? And he comes out and he cuts a promo and he immediately grabs a mic and you, it's like, it's crazy. It's like he immediately grabs a mic and you're like, I'm listening. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, you yeah, automatically. You, pay, you yeah. pay attention when Scott, Scott Steiner gets the microphone. He says, you people can't handle the truth. <laughs> All he sees is a bunch of genetic deficient douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> genetic deficient? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> you are lacking uh, genetics. You don't have enough genes. <laughs> Get more genes. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's my guy right here. He says, Jesus. I see you pencil neck geeks going to the gym trying to beat a big bad booty daddy. Forget yeah. that. Go get some Stop beers, it. sit on the couch and watch Big Papa Pump. Because <laughs> when Big Papa Pump comes to town, all the hoochies come around. <laughs> he he said, said it's, it's like taking candy from a baby. What? He goes, it's like taking candy from a baby. Bro. <laughs> I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> he said, nothing's finer than Scott Stana. He says they all want to spread the word, and he has his fist up. What? <laughs> like a beer roll. That's it. Oh, yeah, that's a tree. Yeah, big pop, 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 come down. All the hoochie come around. That's it. Now it's time. Hell yeah. Nothing fine at this guy's time to hit my fucking music. That's it. There's <laughs> rules. This is my guy right here. Dude, Booker T looked crazy here. Yeah, he did. His theme song kicks so much ass here. All timer. Yeah. All timer. Absolutely. Yeah, easily. The little laughing in the background of the track makes that go twice as hard. <laughs> you like oh, the, the, the Power Ranger putties? Ooh, yeah, that shit rules. That's exactly what it is. Big Mighty Morphin guy. <laughs> Booker T's a Zordon era Power Rangers fan. Hell yeah. Big Zordon era guy. Shout out to Rita Repulsa. All day, all day. <laughs> all um, right. Steiner beats Booker T after Buff Bagwell interferes here. Pretty little, I mean, a little good match here. Um, Everything Booker T did, I thought was great. Everything Scott Steiner did here, I thought was fucking awful. Huh? <laughs> like, dude, Steiner, like, Booker T could have wrestled a fucking broom here. It would have been better. You're going to suck my dick or what? When Big Papa Pump goes to town on a hoochie, <laughs> come around, baby. <laughs> There's also like four guys in the front row that just fought for the whole show. <laughs> Did you, see these guys? <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> That's all Did I care about, dude. Guys? That's all I care about. Holler. That's all yeah, I Buff care about. Every the whole match, all I was thinking about was that was in my dick and candy around? from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> he said the hoochies is like they're gonna get up my barrel. I said, dude, you know what, dude? Fuck yeah, you're right. All True. I'm thinking this whole show is like, damn. So he came through. He did the greatest segment in the beginning of the show where they were riding around as cops, giving that away shit stuff. Was great. And then he got to come in and talk about how much sex he has with all these women. I'm like, uh, this <laughs> gimmick goes crazy. <laughs> he, uh, he, yeah, he's he's also like, I mean, Steiner's always been big, but like, good God, dude, he, is he looks odd. so good here, dude. You could. You could not fit any more steroids in this man. <laughs> yes, you could. There's more. <laughs> it's like taking candy from a barrel. <laughs> a little beer bro and a hoot your mamas. They won't get some of the big pop pump. They come with a booty daddy. I said, that's what's up right here, bro. Holler True. if you hear me. I said, that's all Steiner, I want to say. Steiner wins with the Steiner recliner. Uh, but it was like a weird like pass out submission thing. Like The referee raises his hand up once. He drops. Twice it drops. Three times he grabs his wrist. 
and then it drops and then it's over. Yeah, I love oh. that uh, he literally just used a Steiner recliner because he looked good when he did it. Yeah. <laughs> just showed off his make meat. You, I will make you a couch. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the hustle. And then he throws the ref over the top rope and hits Booker with a chair for fun. He should have cut another promo. I would have been down for it. <laughs> After that, uh, there's a Flair and Goldberg recap. Um, and Tony Giovanni talking about the Nitro Girls. And then backstage we go. Mean Gene with the big man with the ponytail. Jerry fucking <laughs> Flynn. Jerry Flynn. Big dog. I forgot about Jerry Flynn. <laughs> Looking like Bart Gunn. <laughs> 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 so Jerry Flynn is uh, set up for this match. I guess uh, he's got a match with Sonny Ono and the Cat at Uncensored. My man. Um, so Sonny Ono comes in here trying to uh, trying to bribe Jerry Flynn with money. Give him some money, and Jerry Flynn says no. Fuck that. He grips him up, and out of nowhere, the Cat super kick to the back of the head of uh, Jerry Flynn. He falls to the floor, and then <laughs> fucking the Cat goes in front of him and he stands up and he says. Come fight me. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Flynn is knocked out on the floor. <laughs> and then Sonny Ono cuts Jerry Flynn's ponytail, which is the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. Uh, and the cat's like, Get the- oh, because uh, Jerry Flynn knocked like all the money all over the floor that Sonny Ono had. So cat's like, get the money. Get the money. And Mean Gene says, I'll get the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tremendous. my guy right there. All and, uh, $23 speak- of it. Speaking of your guy, here comes Big Barrel Chess. Hold on, before we get Scott Norton, I just want to say this. I don't know if you caught this or not, but as it cuts to black on that last scene, Jerry Flynn starts to get up, like he's like, like the segment's cutting to black, and he He peeks his head up, and you can hear the cameraman go, stay there, Jay. (laughs) So he puts his head back down. You gotta go back and watch it. He starts to get up, and then then his head, he just puts his head back down. (laughs) Dude, it was awesome. Oh my god, I definitely missed that. That was shit. Yeah, that ruled. And the twenty-three dollars popped me huge. Sonny Ono brought out a bunch of ones and said, "What you want this?" <laughs> <laughs> mean Gene trying to take it. <laughs> like, please, I will take that twenty-three dollars, sir. Please. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, Scott Norton. This is the dude right here, dude. Dude, he his chest. He's looking, looking gigantic. The deepest V gear I've ever seen in my life. Just making sure you see his fucking titties. This man, hell yeah. you know about it. And here comes little Ram Mysterio Jr. and the little jeans and the cross. And in the, the jeans, crazy. And no mask, no mask. Rey Mysterio Jr. Um, they show they cut to the crowd. A lot of white people doing white people dances to the filthy. They're animals. going crazy, <laughs> man. Big, big filthy animal guys. What do you think of the the filthy animals as a cohesive unit? Well, I always thought it was weird that they got ready to take his mask off, but he has his mask tattooed on his shoulder. It obviously meant a lot to him. I don't know why you made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't. Con- How can they connect to a man with a mask on? Pulls. Doesn't That's what all, I mean. They tell you that. I mean, like, it, I get it. I get that mentality of like the crowd needs to see your face to uh, convey the emotion. But I mean, like, you could also do any other thing to convey emotion. Then. But you saw yeah. how much money Ray made in WWE with yeah, the mask. Really, I mean, look how much. Yeah, Ray fucking figured it out pretty well, and I'm pretty sure he had a good idea of it there too. It was just bullshit. They were just. I they tell know, you that. I mean, viral. they tell you that even today. You know, it, yeah. when, you, when like in training, that's like something that you hear a hundred times. It's like, I mean, it's a given that it's harder to convey emotion with a mask on. Sure. But like that, that doesn't mean like you can't convey it in other ways. Like you said, like, yeah, body language is huge. Like the way yeah. and the when you do moves matters a lot. You know, like there's way more than like lock up, make sure your chin's up and do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I feel like they get the point. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You watch one L fucking generico match and tell me you can't convey emotion with a mask. on. Oh, yeah, like, come absolutely. On, this is all in the way you conduct yourself. Um, so this match is, I don't know how long it went. It felt long. And it's Scott Norton just beating the shit out of Rey Mysterio. It went and just, seven minutes, this he's match, just by the way. tossing him around, chopping him, doing crazy scoop slams, just. I was surprised him. that Ray wrestled in that big necklace with the with the cross. The cross, on it. yeah, I thought I was surprised that too. Ray got necklace. Yeah, <laughs> you got <laughs> necklace, Ray. <laughs> Scott Norton picks Ray up by his jeans. Did yes. you see this spot where he yes, he yeah. press slammed him, but he picked him up by literally his jeans and pushed him yes. over his head and then pressed him. I was like, this is incredible. He did it. Was that was that, was that the one handed one? Yeah, one handed on yeah. the jeans and lifted him up. Yes. I'm like. <laughs> the rules. So the finish of this match, Rey Mysterio wins this match um, because the referee wasn't looking. And he kicks Scott Norton in the balls, and Scott Norton falls over like a fucking ton of bricks and gets one, two, three, fast count. It's over. This Rey is Mysterio like my wins. favorite finish ever. Well, really? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
dude, this finish kicked ass. Scott Norton's <laughs> that that fucking that was incredible. It's the Ray kicks him in a dick and he just goes. <sighs> I thought it was funny. It's just like it, I guess maybe if it, the match didn't go on as long as it did, I wouldn't have minded as much. But it was just like fucking like dry, dry, like seeing Scott Norton doing Scott Norton stuff is awesome. But fuck, man, yeah, it's he's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's that guy. We should get Scott Norton on our first show. Scott, <laughs> we should actually book Ray and Scott Norton, redo the match, and this time we're going to have Scott Norton crush Ray Mysterio's head like a grape. <laughs> the Kali spot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he'll lose by getting kicked in the nuts. Do the spot again. <laughs> <laughs> I like that spot. They cut, they cut to the Nitro Girls again. Uh, Hold on a second. But, uh, before this, um, oh. I was going to ask you, what, what what do you think? Uh, you think Ray has a big pay-per-view match? Like, not knowing the card. What do you... you, you, you after I imagine this, it's him and Nash because they did a hype video. Yeah, but if they did not do the hype video after this beatdown <laughs> with the balls kick, would you think that Rey Mysterio would I would think Scott Norman would get a rematch, sure. Yeah, but it was Kevin Nash who yeah. had nothing to do with Rey Mysterio this entire night. Well, I guess because Scott Norton's in the NWO and he's a giant, so... Well, I mean, sure. he got the fluke win over Big Kev. Yeah, I'm just saying they did... Hyping this besides the hype promo, they didn't really do much. Besides. Yeah, no, they don't really. I don't even know on comment. I mean, I guess on commentary they talked about Nash, but yeah, yeah he was I a mean, giant yeah. killer. That, I mean, they, yeah. that's what they nicknamed him. He is not Spike Dudley though. Shout out to Big Spike. Yeah, he's Rey Mysterio, duh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. Jeez, he dude, has a mask on. on. It could be a different guy, like, like a mask off. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, you're right. <laughs> they were ahead of the game. Big Kev probably told him to do that. He said he wanted a Raybacks right day. He said, "Hey, bro, fucking mask off." He said, "Damn, that's lit." <laughs> <laughs> so this is where they finally revealed that they were building this fucking cage this whole show for Flair and Hogan I was like alright cool dun -dun -dun -dun. Oh, that's good. and then up next here comes Van Hammer why the fuck I don't remember Van Hammer being a hippie yep uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. I, don't, I remember him in the flock and I remember him with the big guitar but I don't remember him with being a hippie so. um, wow. not that it made any difference because he sucked then and he sucks here this match sucked it was him and Bret Hart. Bret Hart couldn't have done <laughs> shit else here to make this better because this sucked ass. Fucking, they just rest. They did stuff. Bret Hart worked his leg for however long this was, and then he won with a sharpshooter. Cool. WCW style just wasn't Bret's style. No. I don't think WCW was meant for Bret at all. They had no. no idea what they had with this guy. No, absolutely not. And he was like, he was still at his best too. What did he do there? Uh, well, he said. I don't want to work with Goldberg. He said, you're going to work with Goldberg. He said, just don't end my career. He said, I'm going to end your career. <laughs> and then that's uh, I remember, his career. And then he ended his career. Yeah. Didn't I hear something about Bischoff saying one time that Brett wasn't the same Brett from WWE when he came into WCW? Yeah, I'm sure he would say that after he booked him like complete garbage and then did yeah, nothing like, with him. Yeah. <laughs> Got him here against Van fucking Hammer. <laughs> yeah. What do you expect? Oh, by the way, he did the Cobra Clutch Slam and Tony Schiavone made sure you knew because he said, that's his move. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't have a name for it. Oh, that, that's his move. <laughs> cool. Nice. Uh, Br Brett attacked Van Hammer's leg with the chair after the match. He beat him with a sharpshooter, then attacked him with a chair, and the commentary said, I don't know what's going on. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Me neither. Bobby Heenan's struggling to try to. He's like, oh, maybe Brett's trying to let them know that he's the man. Yeah. Nicole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Here comes uh, Hogan and Nash making their entrance. Uh, uh, they get on commentary with Tony Schiavone for the main event of the evening, which is Ric Flair, Nature Boy, taking on Goldberg. So this whole show, I feel like the crowd was fucking dead. Maybe mm. it was from that first fucking hour. Um, Maybe. But this crowd loves them some motherfucking Goldberg. This guy, the press slam is the most over move on this fucking show because they lose it. Probably Every, between both Goldberg companies. Anything like that. Huh? So probably between both companies. Probably. Dude, I've never yeah. seen someone erupt for such a basic move in my entire life. It's they crazy because up. other people on the show did Gorilla Press slams. But, yeah, but Goldberg like does it. Dude, Scott Norton did it with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> on the jeans. The crowd sat on their hands. With yeah. the jeans. Yeah, it just goes to show, um, like, it don't matter. If you're over, you're over. He Not only that, he did the press slam into the power slam, John, which was yeah, that so was, sick. That was so sweet. This crowd's, like, loving Flair tries to leave at one point. Goldberg carries him back. Just a lot of stuff. Flair does... Fucking like four low blows <laughs> in this match. Fuck one Goldberg. of them right in front of the, <laughs> right in front of the referee. Like what you gonna do? He, oh, he is the president of WCW. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fire him. Fire. <laughs> fire. 
Uh, so Flair is just being Flair, dirtiest player in the game, just doing it, whatever he can. He takes the bump off the top rope as Flair does. Uh, there's one spot where Goldberg goes for the spear and like Flair like just barely dodges out of the way. It looked awesome. I you see the way that Flair hit the rope around this time? Yes, like the He'd jump into like, it. Yes, he would, he like would, the weird, yeah. like not a stutter step, but like yeah, he would like leap. Into he it would and literally off. Yeah. like when you when you throw a punch, he would do that into the rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. because he did it to Goldberg. He kept trying to knock him down, so he kept yeah. going off the ropes, and he'd do that same fucking rope hit every time. I said, I love this so much. <laughs> Bro, this dude is awesome. Flair hits a suplex on Goldberg. I was like, whoa, that looked kind of crazy. I don't know. I don't really remember Flair being a suplex guy, especially to a big, big fucking suplex dude like Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but then Goldberg no-sells it and spears Flair. Fuck you, Flair! <laughs> <laughs> Goldberg is in the air in the suplex. He says, "What the fuck? You're not a suplex guy." He just got right back. Up. <laughs> he got up immediately and speared him. <laughs> that was the best. Actually, I, that's up there with best finishes with Scott Norton. I give it that's that much. A, well, it wasn't the finish because there was no finish because the NWO comes out. <laughs> there is no finish because there is not a finish. <laughs> the NWO runs in uh, and it's like jumps the B Goldberg. Squad, probably right or like it was Virgil, Stevie Ray. Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton, I think, too, was there. Mm. They all and but then eventually Nash and Hogan come in. Yeah, too. so then well, the Nash circle Hogan's came a, out. Wasn't <laughs> Nash like they're there? Sammy and Guevara. we're here. Shouldn't yeah, we he said, be they're in there, there? We're here. We should go where they are. <laughs> so they jump Goldberg. Flair starts low blowing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude rules. What he does, and then him and Flair start fighting, and then the show ends. But that's up, up, but up, up. Well, that's all we got. We got, we got, we got, we got. Yeah, we ran out of time. We ran out of time. We had an hour of nothing at the beginning. We ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. WCW Nitro, four point four rating. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. By the way, this leads to uh, Goldberg and Flair teaming up on the next Nitro. Really? Yes. Cool. And they kiss. S- Dinner, 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 dinner. <laughs> and Goldberg teaches him how to do the suplex. <laughs> Dude, that ruled, man. The suplex yeah. nose out of the spear was, oh my god, that crowd erupted when he stood up to, oh, dinner, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, that sums up everything you gotta know about WCW. I mean, so the barbed wire steel cage first blood match for the WCW oh, Heavyweight shit. Championship at Uncensored goes oh, off like shit. this. Flair wins, becomes the president of WCW. Wait, what? Yeah, Flair defeated Hogan. I thought he already was the president. Yeah, but he was gonna all oh, wrestling he's, forever. He's remember, just, he oh, could he be, stays. Okay, he could be president for the entirety of his life for okay. hundred thousand years. If he lost, he would have to retire. So oh, Flair okay. wins it there. They're always retiring, bro. I'm sick of this guy. 